hello, it's Sarah. And <clears throat> I may just call this Clay Tiles Part 2, or, you know, um, I'm working on a clay tile project. And to make clay tiles is simple. And I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about how I get them very square, or, you know, the sharp edges on them. Um, and I'm gonna, I'll go through some of that, but <clears throat> basically, I liked uh, mosaics. So I was doing glass mosaics, and then I was introduced to Lori Micah. Um, I took a class with her, and she makes clay tiles and includes all different types of stuff like metal and beads, and um, pretty much anything goes. She painted on her tiles, which, which really appealed to me. Um, and I went over a lot of this in the last video, but what I wanted to share was what I'm kind of doing to gather up supplies to make this mosaic. Now, a mosaic can be in the shape of something. Um, you know, like you, can, you could make a face on here and, and fill in tiles to make it look like that, or just have a design going around, like and then do all pink tiles in this section, yellow, you know, so, but what I do, it's just kind of a collage. That's what I consider it. It kind of turns out just bright and I don't know, it appeals to me. It may not appeal to everyone, but the mixed texture and, um, you know, even the height, some of the tiles are very thin and some are thicker and you know there's painted and oh, anyway now this design i was calling the boho right and i don't know why i chose to just explain it that way i think it has to do with the this stamp set that i used and the way it's doodled and the way the curliness of the of the leaves and and the color just had a feeling i don't know it said boho to me um so what i've done is now i've gathered up I, fi I finished yesterday, I made some more of the stamped tiles and painted them. So I stamped, and you can go back in my videos and see. And I painted them, and they're all ready. And then I went back through my stash. Now, you need to create a stash. So one day, you just sit down with some white clay, and I like Primo. And this is all I have left of that big block of clay that I use. So I have about a quarter of that left. And you're just gonna roll out some clay and create these shapes. I'll zoom in in a minute. I'm gonna grab a few more. And then you're gonna bake them. And then, or, like I stamp, I'll just stamp. This is one of my favorite stamps. It just has a lot of inspirational words on it and I cut it into pieces and just add stickles to it, maybe a little bit of paint and some stickles. But um, what's great about doing it, and on different days, I, I have a different feel. I never, I never create the same way on, on a given day. Like, it's whatever I feel like doing that day, so it changes it up a little bit. So it's kind of cool because I'll be able to find fat tiles and thin tiles, and it, it really adds to the um, the collage feel. So even though they're all painted, and you know they're still very different in feel, if you know what I mean. So look, so I have a. a a bin that, that I just throw tiles in after I've created them. They're all done. I put them in. These are considered my, my white clay. These are all out of white clay and they're painted. And so what I'm dis discovering too about this is I choose the same colors from my palette. I mean, it's amazing to me, but it works because then when I go to, to make a project, they all play together because they're the same colors. Now, when I've done a Christmas piece or um, I did the under the sea theme, I was I would stick to blue, but even the blue could play with this too, you know? So now the Christmas ones were mostly red and green and black, so they don't play. But all these pink music ones, um, I tend to 
choose the same palette so it, it works out so awesome so these the, the painted ones I did if you look at the colors yellow orange pink purple green uh, purple pink blue oh and blue yellow purple blue so they're all going to be fine so on here when you see the finished piece and then I have my filler tiles now that is considered really try to make some small pieces so on this one I cut strips of the of the gold and silver clay and the um, opalescent clay to fit into the nooks and crannies but then I also make these teeny tiny little tiles that I can fit I really want to try and find a frame I know I have a frame around here all right anyway um, so if when okay and then I did embed only a few things I'm not really gonna I probably won't include these as much with this design because I really like the flatness of it and if at all it would be a very low dimension thing all right I'll be right back I want to see if I can find um, a frame I think I have one okay I knew I had one this one is I think a beach scene this is the beach one that I did and it has a variety of tiles that I kind of think I made them intentionally to do this theme but I kept it in a color scheme right so I think I used one two three colors of clay so it's this blue that looks like a blue pearl blue pearl this is like a dark blue and then this teal green so I basically kept it to those three colors of clay and then I probably made a batch of the white clay and painted it with those three colors so can you see that I'll go in a little closer so basically this tile represents the colors of clay that I used you see and then I accent everything with gold this one was accented with gold um, <clears throat> and silver because I use silver charms let me go back up it's just too hard to stay in the shot if I'm uh, too close because I used silver charms and gold charms okay and then there's the big items are buttons so I use them as my focal pieces so when I get started making the mosaic actually putting it together I separate out the the types of tiles so the ones that I embedded with either buttons or um, jewelry so I kind of separate those out I have my painted tiles and then I wanted to include these because this kind of was representing water to me um, so I have them spaced one two you know I try to go so that your eye travels around the piece and I mean that's okay and then the bubbles so I have bubbles interspersed throughout so when you create your tiles keep that in mind I mean but that that being said when I've done these before and didn't have all these supplies or a budget to go and get certain things or whatever you can absolutely make a, a mosaic with just plain you know stamping like I'm gonna do now all right but I wanted to remind everyone that I don't know just that anything goes you can use whatever you have in your stash to create a theme and then pull it all together and use it to create um, your mosaic so and I like using these are dollar these are a dollar these frames and they're really nice for for the price and I think it makes a, a substantial substrate to use to um, 
to adhere these tiles to because I don't know guys but this is a lot of work for if I'm gonna sell this and I think I sold a couple of the frames I think they were 35 to 45 and I really I mean I think that's like kind of a give a giveaway like I mean I'm not saying a giveaway but um, all the work involved in this you can't get you're not gonna get your money's worth of all the work that you put into it so make sure you enjoy it and um, that's that's the thing don't expect to get um, the money for um, all the work that you put in I mean if you can get back you what you've put out in supplies that's probably you know your best the best way to think of it now to create this I would probably choose oops some um, some of the the main focal pieces oh my hubby needs me to text him something um, that the bigger pieces start big too. start big and um, go from there because it's easier to fill and then by the end you're going to use the tiny little things the tiniest little pieces and your filler uh, your grout sticks that you can cut to fit a certain area so for this one I just put focal pieces right and then you start to fill in and by the very end you can add little jewelry findings and different things and then the very very end you use the the micro beads the seed beads that if there's just a gap there that you want to fill you can add micro beads or anything oh I wanted to show you on this one I actually used this piece of chain which I love and again I've gotten a lot of this stuff on clearance uh, and it's in my stash and I don't even remember I have it but then I go through everything and pull things that would work with that project so that blue chain I thought was very beachy looking like an anchor chain or something but I literally have two pieces of ball chain right there I have one little bling bead or whatever that would be called um, fillers these are just grout sticks bead chain seed be or I keep calling them seed beads micro beads um, so yeah so don't worry about having a little tiny piece to fill in but try to make oh my god my bird hears me talking and wants to be involved um, all right well I'll be right back I'm gonna call my hubby um, so that's what how I would start now this is a repeating pattern because remember the stamps were all only two stamps so I have a lot of the same pattern so I have a lot of these birds and so I would just try not to put them like see how these are together so I move him over here and how they're the same so I move him over here and it just that way you're not bombarded by um, the same design all the time so I would probably start by putting and then yesterday when I made the tiles I tried to make them much smaller I tried purposely purposely to cut them into smaller pieces which which wasn't easy I mean so let's see I have this butterfly and here's another one so that's good and then I have a lot of these berries berries and leaves may end up being next to each other see here's a here's berry same this is the same piece so I'm gonna put it over here the other the other thing is this one happens to be oh it goes with this so I'm not I'm gonna switch these because there's too much of that blue right there the same background color blue this is the uh, mica powder blue so that's kind of how I do it um, I went and got kiwi she is hysterical my little bird anyway let me think what I'm doing alright so then once I kind of have enough of that going on um, I like see there's flowers the other big item besides the berries is the flowers so I would put quite a few of the flowers and here's a small one 
so that can go there. These also have borders on them, so I might not want to put border next to border. This is just mostly blue, but it has flower. There's more flowers, and it's the metallic, the, um, the same, I did mica powders. So mica, mica, there's no mica down here. So I'm going to put that right there. So that's how you keep it different, right? Oh, look at all that. That's it. That, and I didn't think I was going to use that tile. Um, so, all right, once you kind of have established... You know, let's see, I want to put one up here. I love these. I like the mica powder ones. They turned out really pretty. All right, then I'm going to start pulling my painted ones. Some of the bigger ones, because you start big, and you can fill in a lot more space by doing that. No, I have to keep it that way, because that's the direction. But this one can go this way. That's the other thing. If you can turn them, and make some horizontal and some vertical like this is a nice long one so maybe right there um, and right now I'm grabbing ones that have all the colors in it like not just because I have some that are just um, pink and black or blue and black like these but I'm kind of going for the ones that have all the color this is a big one and I put little swirlies so I have one there, one there, and one there. I'm going to put one here. And this probably won't stay like this. I'm just demoing for you guys right now. I want to put more flowers over here. Here's a flower. I don't like it though. I'll put it right here. But this is literally what you do. You just start building and building. Okay, so now I've done the painted tiles. I have other things. I have a dragonfly and a butterfly. I like this butterfly better. Um, and I have some words. See, here's another dragonfly. Um, I have some roses. Little. Um, I also have these applique. I'm probably. I'll probably put these on. So depending on how much of that style of thing, you know, so if I only have two of these and I want to use them, just put one up there and one down here. And you're good. It'll, it'll, it'll flow. And then if I want to use this dragonfly, which I really do, I love dragonflies, I put one and I'll put the butterfly over here. And I think, I thought I had another, a little bird or something. Well, I have this rose. They're kind of similar because it's a very simple style of stamp. This rose and the um, little dragonfly. So again, I would do, well, wait, the dragonfly is up there. So maybe I'll put this one over here and the rose right there. And so let's add a couple music because they're just different. You don't want too much of the same. Um, let's see, do I have any, I had some tinier ones, oh and I love these too, this says strength and friends, and this one says faith, family, survive care, it's a, I think it's like a breast cancer awareness, but I just like the inspirational words, here's hope, so I have a small hope, but I, I, they fit, and they'll, ch they'll change it up, then I'm going to come back with some of the smaller um, pieces of the original stamp, like this one. I just like him. He needs to go there to pull that color in. Um, strength and friends can go there. Faith and family can go there. And hope would love fit. I would love if it fit like here or something, but it doesn't quite. And just right there for now and I don't have a place for these because I kind of filled in all the long spaces but I'll re I would rearrange and figure it out so see how we're starting to come together now look here's a couple of bling items I have these and I mean I don't need them but look this is what it does if you add these to it 
make sure that they're, oops, am I in the shot? That they're, I don't really love them. I think I would rather do pink. There's a lot of blue on this piece, so I would do the pink. And I love this little butterfly. Just a couple of metal pieces. Don't overwhelm the piece. So I have butterfly, dragonfly, a little flower, and then this is really blingy, so I don't know if I'll end up using it. It's so different from the rest. I have these tiny little, oh, you know what? I really like this one. I like this. I want to use this instead. Um, these tiny little hearts, and this is a darker color pink clay. So right now I have mostly all white clay, and then I've added, well, the those are pink, but these are, this is pink, pink, and blue, a little bit of blue, but this is like a darker color pink, but it still plays. All right, so I think you guys are getting the idea. I love this piece. Like, this has to go on here. It's just an AB. I think it's plastic, and I got these on clearance at AC Moore for sure. I know that. That's what all these are. They were just in packs. Oh, my gosh. It's just too gorge. Um, what else? I have this kind of like a turquoise like a solid gem. But, again, I, I think I want to stick with pink gems on this one. I have this... Um, these buttons. These are buttons in the button section, and I embedded it in pink clay, so that could go with my pink clay. Here's a little tiny music. Whoops. Um, and I still have the hand-painted ones, which I love. But see, I'm starting to get to the point where I need small pieces. So that's where it gets a little tricky. If I really like this, if, if I'm feeling this design right now, I usually don't start to glue until every piece is in place. Then I will take off a section at a time. I'll just take off all these tiles and put them over here in the same um, position, add my glue, and then put them back onto the frame in that same position. Um, all right, but yeah, that's the process of when I'm working with tiles. Um, I may come back and do, uh, this is all refreshers, oh my god, but I am in love with this box. Like, I'm in love with it. In person, it's it's stunning. Like, it's stunning. I can't, I, this is my type of thing, though, so it's not for everyone. Um, and so I'm hoping to get the same bang on this piece as I did with that. But I think I'm going to do, I don't have, I mean, this is all the tiles I have. Once you complete a frame like this, it takes a lot of tiles. Um, and so you may not have, you know, all that you'd hope you would have. I'd rather have too many, is what I'm saying. I'd rather have too many and have options. So I'm gonna put these blue ones away. I'm not gonna use them. This is things that I had pulled as well, like these type of flowers. Eh, I don't know. And this super dark pink clay. Eh, I just didn't like it. Um, so you're going to play and I say play a lot, don't I? And just move it around and figure it out, all right? Um, I think that's all I wanted to uh, say. And don't forget, as always, to go back if you have a question because I am reviewing now, pretty much. I think I've done this in previous videos. So those of you who watch my videos, you know, I'm sorry, but... Um, I just want to go back over it. Maybe I didn't include everything. And um, you know what I'll tell you real quick, too, about um, prepping your piece. So de decide on what you want to put these tiles on. And I always seal the wood because wood is a porous surface. And so this creates a barrier for your glue to stick to. Um, so I have gessoed this box and I'll sand it. And then I'll paint it with whatever color paint I want. Um, the next thing I would suggest is a good glue, and the glue I use is Weld Bond. They used to sell this at, um, I think they do sell it at, at Hobby Lobby. Like if you go to their glue department, they might have a smaller bottle. I, I happen to get this at um, Dick Blick Art Supplies. Um, but this is what I was recommended when I was doing glass mosaics. And... Um, 
it it is a great white glue it's just white glue and I tend to squirt it out on a paper plate and use a brush and brush it on and then put a little on the back of the tile as well and then it's glue to glue and you just kind of wiggle it into place and stick it and it dries pretty quick so that's that um, and then for this type of you don't need to grout anything that's why you choose kind of a colorful background color so on my under the sea frame or this one actually is the beach I have gold metallic paint in the cracks so when you look you see the grout lines would be gold metallic right um, this is my first time using black and you can use anything you want but Lori Micah is the one I got the idea from and she used the metallic paint and I thought that was fantastic so I actually used a black paint and mixed it with a pearlescent to kind of give it a sheen and you won't see it you won't see much of it you can kind of see the sheen yeah and I haven't sealed this so um, I probably should put a little varnish on the raw wood just hit and miss here and there um, all right I think I've pretty much covered it all and I'll come back and share the finished product when I do finish it um, it may end up being today although Maya comes today my granddaughter um, all right you guys hope that was helpful and thanks for watching